After doing a 10 part series on fascinating Pokemon theories, it was such a breath of fresh air to talk about Zelda for a change. So here I am back again to give you another set of fascinating Zelda theories. One of the many additions to the Legend of Zelda series brought about by Ocarina of Time was the secretive character Sheik. Throughout the game, this mysterious character helps Link on his quest, leading up to the major reveal that this figure was actually the alter ego of Zelda all along. Sheik has gone on to become one of the most famous characters in the entire franchise, with her becoming a playable character in Super Smash Bros. But some have questioned that perhaps Sheik isn't a her, but actually a he. The logic is that throughout the games you're led to believe Sheik is a man, so what if Zelda's alter ego actually included the changing of genders? This theory was actually fairly decent until you realize that the people from Nintendo have officially debunked it by confirming Sheik is female, but since it was requested by so many people to cover, here I am. One of the most strange people you meet on your journey throughout the Zelda games is the old man that hands you a sword at the beginning of the original NES version before disappearing, never to be seen again. This has led to the crazy idea that this old man was actually Ganondorf. This theory states that during the Hero of Time is Defeated timeline, Ganon runs amok in Hyrule and rules for many years as one would expect. Then at some point, Ganon figures out how to travel in time, and sees how his future self has corrupted and tainted Hyrule. Then seeing this, he realizes the errors of his ways. So he travels to Hyrule one last time to the future, but now he is an old man on the verge of death, and carves out a piece of wood into the wooden sword, and with his last strength he goes into a cave and awaits the legendary hero. Later, Link walks in, and the old man with his last breaths tells him, it's dangerous to go alone. Take this, before fading away into oblivion in hopes that the hero can save Hyrule one last time. In the previous Fascinating Zelda Theories video, I shared the popular hypothesis that the Deku Tree from Wind Waker is actually the seed from the Deku Tree of Ocarina of Time, and overall it was extremely convincing. But since last time, I have found many people that take this theory to the next level by stating that all three of the Guardian Spirits in Wind Waker can also be found in Ocarina of Time. The first and most obvious is the Deku Tree, as we already discussed before. But secondly, we have Jaboon, which some claim can be found in Ocarina as Jabu Jabu, a character whose stomach takes the form of one of the game's dungeons. Not only do their names look similar, but Jaboon's theme is comparable to the music that plays for Jabu Jabu. The third guardian, Valu, who resides on Dragon Roost Mountain, can possibly be linked back to Valvugia, the Fire Temple's boss that was known to cause destruction in Terra on Hyrule. Not only do their names both start with V, but they're also both fire dragons. While these three connections may seem obviously true to some, I need to make it very clear that Nintendo has never officially verified any of these connections between Wind Waker and Ocarina of Time but it seems likely since both games take place back to back on the official timeline. A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo added many things to the Zelda series, as it brought the franchise to a new generation of consoles, but my personal favorite twist was the ability to travel to the dark version of the game known as Low Rule, which practically doubled the game's map. I bring this up because later on, the franchise will create another area known as the Twilight Realm in Twilight Princess, leading me and many others to wonder where this realm falls in place between the other two. Well, since Hyrule and Low Rule are supposed to represent the light and the dark, perhaps the Twilight Realm is somewhere in the middle, considering that the definition of Twilight is an intermediate state that is not clearly defined, along with the other definition referring to it as a time between night and day. With this, it seems that the Twilight Realm takes place between the Light and the Dark Realm. Another additional piece of evidence to add to this theory is that having three different realms would go along well with the use of the number three in the series, since there are three different timeline splits, three Triforce pieces, three few shadows, three oracles, three tunic types, and so on. To wrap things up, let's listen to the Deep Purple song, April, to see if it could have possibly inspired the original Legend of Zelda's dungeon theme.
are a few more Zelda theories that hopefully hold you over until next time. And if you have any of your own thoughts on them, please feel free to leave a comment below. So until next time, thanks for watching.